Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. That's what I'm talking about. Come on with it. So I am definitely excited to be here uh, today. Good seeing a lot of you. Again, had an opportunity to spend some time with you guys what, in 2021. So yeah, man, it's good to see you guys. And then for those who've never heard me speak before, I've never met, what's up? Glad you're in the building. Um, just glad to be here to serve with you uh, today, right? Um, I, always, um, I always say that it's, a, um, it's an opportunity and it's a pleasure. Uh, sometimes I get emotional, right? Um, like to be able to serve. Right. And so for this, these next few minutes, man, I'm here to serve. Right. I'm here to just to serve you um, and just give you what I what I have. Um, I, you know, have some things that I want to share, but we pivot wherever we need to pivot. Right. I, I try to stay in tune uh, enough to hear uh, the vibrations of the people like, yo, this is what I need. That's what I need. And I try to tap in. Right. And so if um, if you if you need something, don't be afraid, man, tap in and uh, let's see where this where this takes us, you know, where this take us on this journey. And I know that you guys had uh, an amazing morning, but let's just see where um, this goes. So, um, again, uh, thanks for having me uh, here today to rock out with you guys. So before I, before I start, I would really like to know, like, give me a couple takeaways that you got earlier um, that was, you know, that just stuck to you, like something that you can use. Uh, you probably heard, you know, all of the stuff that we say, right? You've been in thousands of conferences, you know, but it's sometimes the spirit behind of what someone says or just to reiterate what you were thinking, like, man, that's just confirmation. Um, so does anybody would like to share of something that stuck out to you today from the previous speakers? Come on with it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Gratitude. Gratitude. Um, if you don't mind, I'm just curious why gratitude. Like, honest, like why? Did Adam told a crazy story about a travel experience that, I mean, long story short, um, they had a lot of tough challenges on their travel. But that same day, there was a plane that didn't come back to the ground. So just he realized to have gratitude that he gets to go home to his family and really just put it puts it in perspective. For That's cool. That's cool. Appreciate that. Anybody else? The me's in the back, because that's why I always, you know, said my me's in the back. There you go. All right, there you go. B, what did you get? I got two B's, so, so both of my boy B's, they sold me a house. They, they, they sold my house and helped me find a house, so they did both sides of it. So they were absolutely amazing. So both B's, give me something. Yeah, I love it, man. Uh, for me, it's over over communicating. That's one thing I need to be more consistent about over communicating with people. And that's uh, I'm always trying to get better at that. Awesome, appreciate it. Appreciate you guys sharing. Uh, and, I, and I think this is a, a, a good way for us to tap into what I have today. Um, it was just uh, as I was preparing, uh, and, and as you know, not as many of you know, but I am a believer, right? I don't throw it all over people, but this is important to just what I'm saying, uh, is that as I was preparing, trying to see what to deliver minister uh, today, um, you know, I believe I heard the creator say, Sean, go grab your book and speak from the book. And I wrote this book back in 2017, um, sold many copies of it, and, you know, really put a lot of blood, sweat, tears into it, right? And sometimes we can be hard on ourselves or overlook ourselves. And, and I'll be honest, I don't promote my books. I don't take them a lot of places 
you know, if people buy them online, they buy them online, right? But I was just listening to it. I was like, man, there's so much wealth of information in it. And then sometimes we just discredit ourselves sometimes. And so today I just want to pull out a couple principles from uh, from this book. And I did bring some in the back and they'll let you know last time I was here, I didn't bring it. Right. I didn't even mention my books, but I just um, just felt led to do uh, this today. But um, you, you guys mentioned about taking taking action. Uh, I was watching a movie um, called Harriet. And some of you might have seen the movie Harriet Tubman. Right. And we're coming on to Black History Month and you're going to steal a lot of movies and a lot of talk and, you know, all of that type of stuff, man. And, you know, but I, I watched the movie and I watched it again just yesterday. You know, it was MLK Day. So I was like, what can I watch? And so I t put that in and I saw a couple of things that I didn't see before. If any of you if you, any of you seen the movie. It, it starts out one of the one of the beginning parts. It starts out where her and her husband, Harry and her husband embraces. Right. They embrace and, and he's excited. and He has this paper in his hand. Right. Um, he has this paper in his hand. Does anybody have a scratch people, piece of paper I can have? Can I have a piece of paper from your notebook? Or, you got one? Thank you. So thank you very much. So um, he had this piece of paper in his hand and, uh, and, and they embraced and, you know, the whole nine. And, um, and he was like, you know what I got here? And, and what it was in his hand was uh, it was a letter from a lawyer that he that he got. Right. That um, spoke about their freedom. And so him and, you know, Harriet and her husband walked up to the slave master with her whole family. And they were, you, 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 you know how it was, right? So she was extremely afraid, extremely afraid. And you have to know her husband was free. Her husband and her dad was free, but her, she was still in slavery with her mom and her, you know, her siblings, they were still in slavery. They were still indebted to the slave master. And so as, you know, they walked up to, you know, the porch and where the slave master was with his family, and, you know, her husband said, hey, I, I saw a lawyer and immediately the slave master like perked up like, what you mean you went to see a lawyer? Right. And so they wanted him to hear him out. And so her response was Harriet's response was she said. My mother, my, my mother had an agreement with your with your grandfather. And the an agreement was is when I turn 45 is that I can become free. And she said, sir, I, I don't want my children. I want to have children. I appreciate that you allowed me to get married, but I don't want to have children in slavery. And so I'm just asking you to honor the wishes of your grandfather and my mother. And, and the slave master said, let, let me see the paper. So so he gave him the paper and he got it and he looked at it. And at that moment. He ripped it up in her face. And he said, you will never be free. I don't care what agreement. You would never be free. Your mama belongs to me. You belong to me and your children will always belong to me. And he told her husband to leave and never to show his face in those parts again. And at that moment, you can see Harriet's face. Everything was crushed in that moment because she's like, listen, I, I, at 45, I was supposed to be free. And I'm 57 years old today. I was supposed to be free 12 years ago. And you refused to let me go. But I had to look at that scene. And I said, what if he would have never ripped up that paper? What if he would have let her go free? 
and say, you know what, I'm going to honor that. Be gone. Go have your merry life. But I had to look at it is that if he wouldn't have ripped up that paperwork, I don't think that Harriet would have ever done and made the impact that she has made. And you have to look at yourself. What, what, what happened to you when you're like, man, why did this happen to me? It didn't happen to you. It happened for you. It didn't happen to you. Harriet at that moment was crushed. She didn't see the big picture. She was angry. She was pissed. She went in the, she went in the woods by herself and she began to pray. And she's like, God, kill that man. Kill him. Because she was angry. She was hurt. She was full of pain. But she didn't know that he was raising her up to be a liberator. She didn't know what was on the other side of the trauma. So when we were talking about mama wanting to take action, when mom saying that she wanted to make a pivot and she wanted to do something different, we don't know what's preceding that. And she went to the reverend, when, when she began to say, you know what, I'm out of here, I'm leaving. I, I'm just gonna run away, I'm gone. Because she was going to be sold, up, sold to another place. And she's like, I know what's going to happen to me if I get sold. I already know my fate. And so she went to the reverend and the reverend said to her, he said, you know what? Why don't you just go back? They don't know you're gone. Just go back. My question to you is to go back to what? You already took the big plunge. You already put all your chips in your career. Go back to what? It's not, it's not easy. I know it's not easy always. But go back to what? Mediocrity? To normalcy where it's not fun, where, where it's, it's not like an excursion where we get to discover day by day? And that was the very thing that she needed to take her from striving to thriving, from good to great, from average to elite. And all of us in this room, that's what we're in pursuit of, going from good to great, from striving to thriving, from average to elite, wherever we are, in fatherhood, as a son, as a friend, as a business partner, there's some area where we may be good that we know need to go to great, where we need to go from striving to thriving. We wanna kick this habit, we wanna kick that habit. It's time to go from average to elite. It is 2022. What does that mean? What does that mean for us? And sometimes what happens, we begin to have a level of success. And what happens, we get complacent because we're doing better than other people. We get complacent. We begin to get stagnant because we measure ourselves against other people. They are not the measuring stick. They are not the measuring rod. You are. I reminded of a story, my date myself, that it was probably about in the early 90s. Uh, if you're a Dallas Cowboy fan, I'm not. I was pretty happy they lost the other day. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to use the story from the Dallas Cowboys. Years ago, it was a playoff game where the Dallas Cowboys could have made it to the Super Bowl. And uh, Leon Lett, he recovered a fumble. I think it was Frank Reich was the quarterback or whatever the case, and he fumbled. And Leon Lett got the fumble recovery. My man in the back shaking his head. He see, he, he whipped me. He remembered that play. And Leon Lett picked up the fumble, and my man started running and almost got to the end zone. And guess what he started doing? He started celebrating before he got to the end zone. And what happened out of nowhere? Don Beebe chases him down and knocks the ball out of his hand and goes through the back of the end zone. So not only did they prevent a touchdown, but they gained two points because Leon Lett was celebrating. And let me tell you, a lot of times we celebrate before we even get the victory. 
Just because we have the opportunity or we have the listing or we have, you know, this is going to we begin to celebrate. We don't celebrate until it's finished, until execution is done. And I'm talking to myself. I had somebody call me out on that. I used to get excited when opportunities would be on the table. I would be so excited. I'm telling this person, telling that person. And because I didn't follow through, a lot of opportunities fell because I didn't execute. For me, the possibility was so exciting. It was so liberating, like, oh, I can get this and I can get that. But I, it never materialized because I didn't execute. And so my challenge to you is that we, we want to cherish and we want to take advantage of every moment. But let's hold the uh, celebrations and applauses till we execute. Because we can get complacent. And that's not what we that's not what elite people are. That's not the behaviors of that. In my marriage, I can't. It, it's just not good enough for me just coming home at night. That's what I'm supposed to do. But I need to be mindful of what her needs are. I need to be attentive. When she get her hair done, when she get her eyes done, her nails, like before it was over my head. Now I'm like, I'm looking. Oh, you got the coffin. You got the coffins done. See, come on, I, right? I'm paying attention. Oh, you got your hair done. Oh, who, who's doing it this week, Daryl? Right, so I know her beautician. I know the people who are doing it. Why? Because that's important to her. Guess what? I really don't care. I don't, because it, because it takes up a lot of brain space for me, people. But it's important to her. Right. It's important to her. So I wanted to go from good to great in my marriage. I wanted to go from average to elite as a husband and the same thing in my business. I want to go from average to elite in that area about executing, about following through and making sure I have processes in place because I know that's not my that's not my thing. My thing is connecting with people. But the processes, man, it's like watching paint dry. So I had to earn a right to hire somebody to do the things that I'm not good at. That's my kryptonite. And so I had to be honest, like, yo, that's not my sweet spot. And so why try to be something that I'm not? Stay in your lane. Dominate your lane, bro, because that's where doors and that's where gifts, your gift will make room for you. I'm going to say it again. Your gift is what make room for you. Your gift. And if we monetize, if we learn how to cultivate our gift, it will open up so many doors. And remember this, we never want to be a, a, a public success, but a private failure. I'm big on that. We don't ever want to be a public success, but a private failure. I remember hearing the story of this bird, right? Because we, 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 I want you to understand about complacency and appreciating the process of going from average to elite. It was a bird and it entertained me. If you heard this before, act like you never heard it. But it was a bird who was a beautiful bird that was inside of this jungle or whatever the case, beautiful bird. And he seen a man walking by and he had a box. This is my story, so the bird talks. So the bird, so the bird says to the man, hey, what do you have in that box? And the man replies and says, worms. And the bird says, well, what can I do to get some of those worms? And the man said, easy, give me a feather. And I give you a worm. Bird said, cool, that's simple. <laughs> so he exchanged his feather for the worm. Man comes back the next day, worm, feather. And this exchange took place until this bird no longer had feathers. No longer was beautiful. 
No longer was people coming by taking pictures of him because he was no longer beautiful, no longer can fly. But what seemed to be the quickest way to get what he want actually was the longest way. Is because he sacrificed his hard work. He sacrificed the process for convenience. To say, you know what? Just give it to me. It reminds us some of us, you know, the story in the Bible where my man who was crippled, what did they do? He, he wanted to get healed. And what they did, they wouldn't say, you know, I'm not going to put you in the water, bro. But the but the the way that he was received his healing, they said that these angels will come and stir the water. And what you do, you get in the water at the opportune time and you get healed. And so what happened, they will put him in front of the water. And all this joker had to do was just get in the water. I get it that he was crippled. But this brother could have rolled. He could have failed. He could have scooted in the water, but he never did. He made excuses each and every day why he couldn't have gotten healed. The creator said, why did you not get in the water? He said, I didn't have anybody to put me in. But like, bro, they put you in front of the line. They put you in front of the line. Some of you may have the advantage over other people. You may have grown up in real estate, you, wh whatever. You have the advantage. But listen, just because you have the advantage, you in the front of the line doesn't mean it's going to turn or convert into success. You may have all of this information. You may know how to do it and know what to do. Execution is key. I tell my daughter all the time, my two children, one is extremely athletic and the other one, he's a pretty decent athlete. But you look at them today, they line up neck and neck. Why? Because he is extremely driven and passionate about getting better. Where's my daughter? Natural. And I'm like, babe, your natural talent will not get you where you need to be. You need to bring hard work, execution, coupled with that, will separate you. And so my thing to you is that I want to make sure and I encourage you to couple hard work. And, and I'm not talking about the, the little Ferris wheel, the little gerbil, just doing all that running. Like just because it's activity doesn't mean it's progress, right? We want strategic activity. We want strategic. And I tell people and you guys know my process with me getting over my issues with my dad. Everything I do is strategic. The last time I was here, I was telling you guys how I was growing in forgiveness with my father. Today, a lot better. Now I'm talking to my father at least once a week. Where before I couldn't do that because there was so much pain and trauma associated with it. But I'm being intentional about doing the things that nobody else sees in the public. Because that's where the game is won in the trenches. Behind the scenes when nobody else is watching. When nobody else is watching. No, nobody else is watching. Just like Harriet. I don't know why I had to go through this. I don't know why you chose me for this assignment. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why you chose me to go through what, what I've gone through. I don't know why my marriage had to have all of this ish happening. I don't know why my children, I don't know why my father rejected me or my mother rejected me or well, I don't know why. But my thing is, as I challenge and I ask you to learn how to dance with the current. Learn how to dance with the current. I don't know how to swim, <laughs> but I do know you don't supposed to fight when currents, when you're on boats. I don't think you're supposed to fight it. I think you're supposed to dance with it. 
And in life, we need to learn how to dance with the current. Learn how to do that two-step. I don't, you don't have to have rhythm. I just said dance. It doesn't have to be sweet. You don't have to have the dip. I just want you to dance. To learn how to maneuver in the midst of circumstances. In the midst of situations, learn how to dance with it. My next point that I would like to bring out is, which is huge for some of us, is that we have to clear the clutter. Okay, clear the clutter. I don't know if you ever watched Hoarders, but boy, some of those episodes are scary, scary, right? And we could talk about them because we're just like, man, just throw it away. But there is something, some type of connection they have with that chaos. There's some type of connection that brings them comfort. And when people try to take it away, boy, they come out swinging and fighting. And I'm, it, it, but it's important that if you want a clean house, it's important to know that if you want to go from good to great, we have to clear the clutter. What is that clutter? What, what is standing in a way? Is it your thinking? Is, is it habits? I, I just need you to clear the clutter. In my basement, we just, you know, started renovating it this past week. And my wife, she stayed away from the basement. Why? Because it was cluttered. She like, man, I don't know what we can put down here because you have stuff all over the place. And we only been in this house about a year. She like, Sean, how do you put all that? And I'm like, well, I, I know where it's at. I know how to manage. But she like, I don't I can't operate in this. And I had to be honest, I'm like, man, you know what? Sometimes that's how my brain is. I'm just being honest. Sometimes sometime that's just how my habits are. I'm not standing up here as in front of you as perfect. I'm human just like you. And until we can be transparent with ourselves to know where we need to pivot and where we need to get better, we can keep on lying to ourselves and put on our mask and try to show up like, you know, we, we, we are the pastor of the house and we don't have flaws and we don't have issues. Liar. There's something we can get better at. something we can get better at. But we have to first clear that clutter so we can make room for something new. Make room. It was interesting when, when Brandon and them came to the house, you know, to sell my house, you know, I thought we did a pretty good job with decorating and all that type of stuff. It was nice to us. People come by like, oh, that's a nice house. But he comes in, they come in, they look, they say, all right, we got to get rid of that. We got to get rid of that. We got to move this over here. I'm like, why? He's like, well, you can have the Joes or you can have us. And I'm like, all right, I don't want the Joes. I want the best. And they begin, they begin to strategically give us assignments, say, Sean, get rid of this, move this over here. Just put this over here. You can bring this back later. And where our house was, listen, this was before like that whole pandemic hit when they was fighting for, you know, uh, houses and it was skyrocketing. You got to understand this was way before. And we were kind of nervous because they're like, man, I live in the city of Flint. My neighborhood is cool, but you go one step to the right, we're in the hood, homie. And they came in and they assured us that, listen, you do it with us, we're going to do it the right way. If you follow our lead, we sell your crib. Our house sold in three days. Three days. Why? Because we followed we didn't want to cheat the process, had nothing to do with location. I, I don't know what it was, but I, I know that we followed the instruction, the blueprint. We didn't cut the corners. 
But the first thing he said was get rid of all of this clutter. And so when people came in, the house looked bigger than what it was. It was brighter than what it was. And then they brought somebody in to take these dynamic pictures and these angles. I'm like, man, that's my crib. Do I still want to sell it? <laughs> so whoever she was, I don't know if you were in the building, you, you did an amazing job with painting the picture of what we wanted to be displayed. And my challenge to you is that if you want the picture to be a true replication, if you want the picture to really be authentic, clear the clutter. Don't take a picture. Don't let your life be a picture that's really fake and false and that we have to put these filters on and we have to change this and change that. Don't, no, we don't want that. We want the true, authentic you. But we have to first clear the clutter. We have to first clear the clutter. Say it with me, clear the clutter. clutter. We, 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 We have to, we have to make room for something new. We have to make room for something new. We we have to be intentional about what we have and what we're going after. I'm going to pull one. I want to read just one segment from this part right here. It says, if you are not feeling motivated and you find yourself feeling stuck, most likely your why is not strong enough. Your why should have such a pull that it rips you from the grips of discouragement and thoughts of defeat and pulls you through the rough patches to push you beyond your limitations. And so what I'm saying there is your why should be able to pull you through discouragement. Your why should be able to pull you through because when you're saying that I want to be great, when you're saying I want to be, you know, I, I, I want success. Listen, success asks you every single morning what have you done for me lately? And what are you willing to sacrifice for me? Every single day. It's a conversation. Success in your home, success wherever it is, it's saying, what have you done for me lately? Have you invested in me? What does that look like? What are, we, what are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to give up? If for some of us, even though we may make a lot of money, we are not motivated by money. It's just a few of us in here, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's a few of us just in here, we're motivated by money. But some of us are motivated by helping people. So whatever your motivation is, I, I need you to, to, to hone into that why and allow it to pull you through the noise of the world. to pull you through, to pull you through it so you don't give in, so you don't give out. So my, in in my, in my closing today, I just want to challenge you to be intentional, be intentional to you give grace to you, be patient with you, make sacrifices for you. If I was to challenge you and ask you, when you see your clients, when, when, when you see your clients and ask you, what do you see? I'm quite sure you could see a whole lot of stuff. Right. You can walk in the house and you can say, man, this is not this is not a home. This is just a house. It's no love. No love here. Just a right. You know, you've been in a lot of houses. You, you can just discern. But my question to you is, is I want to ask you. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? Because we 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 reflect and we. We can spend a lot of time talking about others. But I need you to look 
at yourself and be honest about what do you see when you see you? And do you know who you are? Right? If somebody was to ask you, who are you? Would you be able to say who you are without saying what you do? That's the question. If real estate was not a part of your life, would you be able to say who you are? You are not real estate. Real estate is what you do. You do what you do because of who you are. And that's what I want part of your 2020 to be, because the more we become authentic of who we are and know how we operate, know who we are, man, we hit that sweet spot. Because life sometimes don't allow us to figure that out, right? Because we have kids and we have family, we always running. But I want you to take the time to discover who you are. Outside of kids, outside of marriage, outside of boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it is, I want you to be intentional about, you know what? I'm finding me this year. I'm finding me. I ask so many people that question, who are you? And they don't know outside of what they do. When football was taken away from me, I'll be honest, John, I, d I didn't know who I was, man. It's because my whole life, the lights was on and people was celebrating what I did. They were celebrating how fast I could run and what type of moves I could make. And when the lights went off, I didn't know who was standing there. It was a little boy that was full of, that was afraid. That was afraid. And you guys heard me say, once I went to the prison to work, to work. <laughs> Listen, ain't nothing wrong with, you know, what there is, but, you know, hey, you, you can recover from that, right? That was my greatest job ever. I don't even consider it a job when I worked there. But that's where I discovered who I was, man, in prison behind those walls. Because they didn't care. And when I could see men inside of there being dads and being patient, I'm like, man, you in the cage all these hours a day and have a peace. I'm like, man, you f more free here than people are in the wor free world. More free. And that was the thing with Harriet. She said, listen, I want freedom. I want freedom. If it costs me my life, so be it. If it costs me my life, so be it. What are you willing to sacrifice for your freedom? Your personal freedom. And not freedom that somebody give you that can take away, but your own freedom. And I believe that true success, I can give you all these blueprints but you hear the theme of my heart, that true success comes when we grow from the inside out. I can tell you about writing your visions down, making them plain. I can tell you about doing a vision board. Right, I can, I can tell you about getting you a plan and the blueprint and the strategy and the whole nine. Those are all phenomenal and they work. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Meditate day and night. Speak those things that be not as though they were. I know all of it. But I believe the, to sustain success is that we have to grow from the inside out. So when life hits us, oh, we strong. We know who we are. We're not gonna pivot, we're not gonna deviate because we know our assignment. We're flat-footed, we're planted. 
So now in the midst of that, we can still fight and build at the same time. Because that's what true success, we fight and we build at the same time. I, I didn't write the script, but we have seasons where we're just building and everything is cool, but then there is a fight. But we have to learn how to fight and build at the same time. And so I want to stay ready by building and growing from the inside out so when life does happen, yo, I'm ready. Like, yo, like, let's get it. Let's get it. So when wifey says, listen, I had an affair on you, like, yo, let's get it. Did it rock me? Absolutely. But I had something strong on the inside of me that was already developed, that was ready for life to, to pop me in the mouth. When my mom died in the midst of that, listen, did it hurt? Yes, but I could stand flat footed. When my job fired me and did me a, a solid and did me a favor, I'm good, all three at the same time. And then going back and forth to court, having some legal issues at the same time. Four things that will cause somebody to just say, I quit. But I say, you know what? If you brought me here, <laughs> I'll trust you. It's a lot of crying, but I said, I trust you. I trust you. Because I said, I want more but I had to be willing to pay the price. I told you guys the last time I was here and I bought me a fake Louis Vuitton bag in New York. I wanted to, I wanted to play that part. My kids was laughing at me. Dad, you got a fake bag. But I wanted it, you know, I wanted it, but I didn't want to pay the price. Come on, I got a testimony today. For Christmas, I bought my wife her first Louis Vuitton bag from the Louis Vuitton store with that box. Many of you in here already have it. But for me, that was huge because at one time I was faking. I wasn't living it. I wanted what it looked like. But I didn't want what it felt like. And so this, this Christmas, I walked in there with my head high, didn't even flinch. Said, yeah, she liked that one. Paid them. And I see, I'll be back in two days to pick it up. And I went and picked it up and I was smiling. Why? Because I know where he took me. I know what I went through. He had to level my mind up. See, I could have bought it a little while ago, but my mind wasn't there. I didn't think I deserved it. See, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to be transparent. I didn't think I deserved it. But when I presented to him what I wanted, he said, it's time to level up. So it's not, a, listen, it wasn't about the bag. It was about what he was trying to do on the inside of me. He's trying to grow me from the inside out. Clear the clutter so he can make room. So you can be, so you can have what you want. You deserve it. Those people deserve you. They don't deserve another real estate agent. They deserve you. It's not about real estate. <laughs> it's about the encounter. It's you and your assignment. You just happen to get paid to do what you do. I'm gonna say it again. You just happen to get paid to do what you do, but it's about the assignment. You get, happen to get paid well to do what you do. You're like, man, I get, yeah. It's part of your assignment. So that's my time. Clear the clutter. <laughs> so I do have these in the back. I appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. So Sean's got some books in the back. My question to you is, is there any content here any photos you want to take with Sean? Is there a post that could potentially happen today? Would you be available? Oh, for some yeah, abso abso absolutely. 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 No, I, I appreciate it, man. I, I appreciate being able to, to serve and to build with you and grow uh, with you. Um, I, I, don't, I don't go a lot of places just to go. Honestly, I turn down a lot of places. Um, but I really believe in what you guys are doing. 
and, uh, and just to partner and collaborate with your hearts uh, here today is just, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure and opportunity for me to be able to share this space um, and share my story, right? Uh, and be a part of your life, right? Be a part of your life. So I can just root from the back like, man, um, I met that person, I saw that person, I know they're clearing the clutter. I, I know they're going home, you know, and getting things right in the crib. I, I, I know they're intentional about it because they know it's the assignment. They're not like everybody else with the bread. They, they know that they just happen to get paid to do what they do. So yeah, man, I appreciate it, brother. Yeah, give them a round of applause.